Orebogo shakata baba baba. Lebrogo sikata baba baba. Magodoro borika na mashikata baba baba. Ah, love you. Magodoro borika na mashikata baba. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Lord, I stand. I stand in honor of you. Holy Spirit, come on. Holy Ghost, to you. Oh, yes, Lord. I stand in honor. Of you. I want you to give him all glory, worship him wherever you are. Bless him for he is God. There is none like him. There is none that will be compared unto him. Generations will come and go. God will remain the same. He cannot change. He is the I am that I am. He is the unchangeable changer, ancient of days. Omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscience, God. Thank you, Jesus, for life. Thank you for healing, for prosperity, for advancement, for the will of God. We bless you, Lord. We worship you. We give you all exaltation and honor. Have your way, O Lord, that your name will be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. Just share this on your wall. Invite your friends and families. This is the day of the Lord. We are rejoicing and we are glad to be part of what God is doing right now. Rebogo sukotoboli kanama mama. Thank him for life. Thank him for he is worthy. There is none like him. There is none that will be compared unto him. Generations will come and go. God remains the same. He is everything that we need. There is nothing that you need outside of God. So we just have to acknowledge him and get to his presence. Because in that, the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. Lord, we bless you. We worship you. Hallelujah. We exalt, we magnify you. We thank you for you are God. There is none like you. There is none that will be compared unto you. Generations will come and go, but you remain the same. Hallelujah. Have your way, O oh Lord. Have your way, Father. We are grateful to be alive today. We are grateful for the health that we have. We are grateful for the provisions. We are grateful. Hallelujah. In the name. Tekorobo sekete bababa. Makodorobo rekene mashikata bababa. Rakita rabaliko tosokotobo. We are grateful for everything that you have done in our lives and continue to do. Do more, O oh Lord Father. Today we bring ourselves as a living sacrifice that you look on us with your mercy, have mercy upon us, saturate our heart and our minds with the blood of Jesus. Let the blood that speak better things than the blood of Abel. Let it speak life in our lives now. Let the blood begin to speak transformation. Let the blood speak mercy. Let it speak forgiveness of sins advancement let the blood speak the will of god the bible says, when you pray pray in this manner our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come today we come into your presence we ask for thy kingdom to come into our life let the power of the heavenlies the administrative authority of god the advancement the might of god come into our life thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day today our daily bread Forgive us our trespasses in every form of way. Let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. Thank you, Jesus, for we know that you have done it. We know that you can do it. Receive every exaltation and honor. Receive all glory, O Lord. Majesty, we worship you. We exalt, we magnify you. Oh, Rabba Baba Baba, Lika Nama Shikoto Bo 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 Bo. Lika Taraba Sikata Baba Baba. Blessed be thy holy name, O Lord. Take authority. Give us utterance this hour. Take over our vocal cord. Lord, possess my mouth. Everyone that is hearing the sound of my voice, they will hear me, but they will hear God also. Give us listening ears. Not just hearing ears, but listening ears. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Bible says on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, the Spirit came upon them and gave them utterance and they began to speak with new tongues. Everyone that is 
in our all of our sphere today let them begin to speak in new tongues in life let new tongues of advancement new tongues of joy new tongues of business new tongues of administration new tongues of success and prosperity new tongues in all that they do begin to manifest right now thank you jesus thank you holy ghost in the name of jesus christ we bless you lord we worship you we take authority over this vicinity and this proximity we take authority over this place where we are where we are broadcasting right now here in atlanta georgia we take authority over the city of labor we take authority over the county of Gwinnett. we take authority oh lord labor go sakataba of, of the Atlanta Metro and the state of Georgia, United States of America, we take authority. As we plead the blood upon the highways and the byways, we plead the blood upon the freeways and the corner streets, upon the expressway and the airways and the seaways. Lord, let the blood begin to speak for us now. Great things, more than what <coughs> we could have done for ourselves. The Bible says the blood of Jesus speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. Let the blood speak for us, transformation advancement let the blood shall speak the will of god holy spirit speak for us right now in jesus mighty name we pray we thank you for the word shall come expressly the bible said the entrance of the word giveth light and understanding to the simple lord your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path give us all of father the word that we shall speak that we should bring glory unto thy holy name it shall not be an in, in, uh, what we call enticing word of a man, but it shall be the word of God that will set us apart today. Lord, take over our vocal cords. Speak through us. Speak in us. Make a name for yourself in everyone that is hearing the sound of our voice today. That your name, O Lord, alone shall be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. We bless you, Lord. We worship you. Yes, Lord. Majesty. Worship his majesty appreciate him in jesus mighty name we pray yes lord we are talking about the units of destiny it's time and god will give you both today you shall receive ability and capacity to be able to advance to what god has called you to be the time to do it you will be there because many people what makes people to become desperate in life is when they feel that they don't have time anymore. But I want you to know that God is going to grant you the ability and the capacity of restoration. God will redeem your time today. Whatever you have not done at the time you ought to do it, don't be in a hurry. God shall redeem your time today by the authority and the power in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. For redeeming our time the bible said the labor of the foolish were every one of them because he knoweth not how to go to the city in ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15. today god will give us the how the how to go how to go there must be a how to in everything that you do but before you you think about your how what is the why of your life why are you where you are today if you don't understand why there is nothing you can do why are you where you are? Why are things the way they are with you? If there is a spiritual force against it, we can stand in the spirit and undo that. Why? Once you understand why, then you are ready to move to the next dimension. How can I change it? How can things be better than what it has been before? In my life, in my family, in our ministry, business, job, career, in my marriage, how can can things change and be, when you know how you know what to do what do i have to do what is my problem what is the problem what is the solution that is where you do visibilities understanding cause and effect thank you jesus christ today is a new day that not only god will deliver you from delay the spirit of delay is what the devil pray upon a lot of destinies have sac been sacrificed in the altar of delay and if we arrive in time many things could have happened in our lives but because there are forces that the devil set to check man 
And some of those forces come in form of delay. Today, God will deliver you from every spirit of delay, every form of delay. Solomon says something. He said, I return and see that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. Hallelujah. Nor bread, yet to men of skill, nor wealth and riches to people of understanding, but time. Time and chance happen to them all. Today, God will give you both the opportunity, which is chance, and he will give you the time. Whatever time that you have lost, receive it back now. In the name of Jesus Christ, because the unit of destiny is time. Once you have time, everything will fall in place. A lot of people are so anxious. They are full of anxiety because they feel they don't have time. But I want you to know that God, if God is going to restore you today, not will only God restore what you have lost, God will give you time. So even if you are older, when God met Abraham and spoke to him and said, get out from thy father's house, Abraham left at the age of 75. He didn't have time in our time again. There was no time for him, but what did God do? God extended his days. Abraham lived another 100 years in the sight of God so that he can actualize and fulfill the purpose of God in his life. Genesis chapter 12. Abraham was 75 when he left Harem. By the time Abraham died, he was 175 years. So he lived a century in the eyes of God because God needed to give him enough time to be able to do everything that he didn't do when he was younger. Ah, nah, bah, bah, bah. Today, God is redeeming your time. Receive that ability right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, whatever you have missed or you will miss, there must be a catch-up and that is where miracle comes. There must be a miracle in your life to change the status quo. To change where you are. I want to show you something in the Bible. Matthew 25, the Bible said in verse 1, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened as ten virgins, which took their lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Verse 2, and five of them were wise and five were foolish. What separated these two virgins, group of virgins, were time. If the bridegroom has come at the time he's supposed to come, we will not know who is a foolish virgin or who was a wise virgin because everything could have happened in his time. But because the bridegroom delayed everything that will delay a miracle, that will bring you backward or take you 10 years backward, we come against it today. Look at what happened in this story. You will just pity because if you see they started as virgins, they were pure, they, they were righteous, they had everything, all 10 of them. But when the Bible says in verse 3, they that were foolish took their lambs and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamb. That was what separated them, the, the length of oil. But look at how did we know that the other ladies were foolish? How did they get exposed? The Bible says, while the bridegroom tarried, verse 5, they all slumbered and slept, all of them. And at about midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamp. Verse 8, And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Your lamp will not go out. In fact, everything that will delay your success, delay your blessings, delay you today, we cancel it in the name of Jesus Christ. And that was when they discovered, because the bridegroom tarried, verse 5, while the bridegroom tarried, that was what caused that delay. Some people have been delayed in things that are supposed to happen in their life, not because they have done anything wrong. But the spirit of delay today we are going to cancel it every spirit of delay everything that will keep you bound that will not let you to get what you're supposed to get at the time you ought to get it we know about abraham how he was delayed 75 years he has not started a family have he has not started having children that's a lot of spirit of delay the devil could have killed him like his brother or his father but god stepped in even though he started late but god gave him time that's why I say the unit of destiny is time. Once you have time, whatever you don't have that, you will get it back. 
and by the power and the authority of the resurrected Christ receive time in any area of your life because some people succeed in some areas and they don't succeed in another area not because they don't want to because there is a spirit of delay in that area waiting for them every delay that the devil has used to keep you bound or a member of your family or your ministry or business job career your marriage whatever has been delayed in your life receive it now you need a miracle god is going to give you one in jesus mighty name we pray the bible says in verse 8 and the foolish said unto the wise give us of your oil for our lamps have gone out your lamp will never go out the light upon your life will continue to shine the bible says, arise shine for thy light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you hallelujah i just read matthew 25 one to eight our light has gone out today your light will begin to be on every oil that will sustain the capacity of the light in you receive it if you need vessels god will give you vessels that will propel you that will carry that oil so that your light will not go out what the devil does is delay you and delay you until you are wet and you are tired and your light begin to go out but today i command you to stand up and collect more oil, receive more ability and capacity. Let the room, let God begin to make room for you today. The Bible says the gift of a man, make it room, room for them. You shall have room today to explore, to expand, make it way for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. So the five ages, their problem was delayed. The bridegroom tarried and they couldn't make it. Today, whatever has started in your life, whether it is business connection, advancement, some people have graduated for a long time. They couldn't find jobs in their area of studies. And now they are doing something that they don't know anything about, just to keep them going. And before you know, the devil will keep you there. But don't let him. Because if you don't fight back, he will beat you and keep you there and keep you down forever. Until one day you say, enough. Devil, I studied. I'm going to go and practice what I studied. I'm a lawyer. I have nothing to do in the classroom. Hallelujah. I'm a business person. I'm nothing, I have nothing to do working in this office. The devil likes to stop the children of God with delay. But today, because we know, the Bible says we are not ignorant of his devices. You are going to come against every spirit of delay of any kind of form in the name of Jesus Christ. Genesis chapter 41. Remember when, when Joseph met this butler and the baker in prison after he was accused of rape the bible said he began to serve this man because he knew that they were coming from where he's going he has a, a discerning spirit but one day both of them dreamt and they told him their dream and he interpreted the dream and the baker was killed and the butler was released and joseph begged him say please remember me when you get into the palace remember me what happened the guy forgot Joseph have to spend another two years before the king. God have to cause the king to dream. Ah, Labaka. If that guy has remembered Joseph, probably he would have been out maybe three months after the, the, the butler came out. But the butler forgot about Joseph until the king had his own dream and there was trouble in the whole land. Now God have to use the butler to remember Joseph. But even though he remembered him late, it's better to be late than the late. Joseph has spent another two years more in the prison for what he did not do. Every spirit that have delayed your miracle, your blessings, today we cancel it in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever power that the devil have used to keep you bound through the spirit of delay, we frustrate that effort by the power and the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Zechariah chapter 4. If you read from verse 6 to 9, the Bible said, there was something here. Zerubbabel began to build the house of God. And after a while, the house was stolen. Zerubbabel was the governor of Judah at death. They have abandoned the house for 40 years. And they began to build it again because different prophecies came about the house. Now Zerubbabel, they were building, but the building was not going nowhere. Until the word of God came from the prophet Zechariah. He said, this is the word of the Lord unto the river. Say to him, not by might, nor by power, but by the spirit, says the Lord. 
Say, who are thou great mountain old before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain and shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shouting, crying, grace, grace unto it. But I want you to see something in verse 9. It said, The hand of Zerubbabel has been laid the foundation of this house. His hand shall finish it today. The anointing to finish come upon you. Every foundation of whatever you have begun, you have you have begun a new job, a new career, business. You have begun a relationship. You are in marriage. Your hand has begun it. You know, everybody begins. And I see people that every year they are beginning. There's always a new, new year resolution. They will never finish. If your life is about beginning something all the time, you are always beginning. The devil is destroying you because delay. Every, the, everything about you will be stalled. The only thing that grows is your age. And before you know it, all the, your working years, your afternoon has expired and you are always beginning something. That's why whatever you start, stay there. God said, forget the failures of yesterday. Isaiah 43, verse 18. Forget you the things of the past. Don't even consider the things of the old. Verse 19, he said, for I will do a new thing now. Make some things work. I will even make a way in the wilderness. And water shall spring out of desert. So it, it, what it means is if, if nothing is working, it will work for you. So Zerubbabel began that house. The devil wanted to delay him until probably his tenor will be over and he will be out of government and the house will never be complete. God said the hand of Zerubbabel has laid this foundation. These hands shall also finish it today. Every foundation that you have laid, everything that you have built, you have begun, whether it is business, ministry, studies, some people have begun school. They have gone to, I know people in this country, they have gone to school, been in college 10 years, they have not graduated. Because every time they are, they are, they are going to school, something happened in their family, they have to drop out and work for a while, and they go back and they are always in, in school. The student loan has gone so high. At a time, they can't even graduate anymore. And they just say, let's forget about school. Delay! Whatsoever you have begun, you shall finish. You must finish it today. I say you shall finish. You shall finish it. The devil will not outsmart you, shall change you, push you out. And sometimes the devil use people that you know to keep you bound. Like in the case of Jacob. It was a good intention. The brother wanted to kill him. The mother said, go back to my, 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 my our place and go to my brother, Leban, and stay there for a while. When, you, when your brother cool off, then you come back. But one year turned to two years, two years turned. 20 years have passed. The guy was still serving. And normally as a Jew, if you serve somebody and in an apprentice for five, six, seven years, and that's the max, the person ought to pay you, settle you to start your own. But, just, but, but Jacob served for 20 years and his wages were being changed every day. In fact, for him to even feed, he has to pay, serve. To marry, he has to serve. Everything was a, a scam. And he could have died in service. In Genesis chapter 31, God said to him, get out of the house of Laban. If you look at verse 1, the Bible says, and he had the word of Laban's son saying, so Laban and his children began to plan how to take everything from him. Had taken away all that was our father's. And of that was our father's. Had he gotten all his glory. So they say, every glory he has is in our father. And the Bible says, and Jacob beheld the countenance of Laban, and behold, it was not towards him as before. And the Lord said unto Jacob, return unto the land of thy fathers and to thy kindred, and I will be with you. This guy was the custodian of wealth in the world. And Laban knew that the moment Joseph stepped into his family, everything about his business began to quadruple. So he has to milk him and keep him there as long as he can walk so that he can serve all the years of his life. He will use it to prosper him. But God told Jacob to get out. I don't know where you are, that the devil is delaying you. They might have been paying you and they'll be telling you that, oh, you are doing a great job. Please just stay here a little while. And you are doing, you are, you are there. Everything about life is time. Time. Time and chance is what happens to life. Opportunities and time. If you cannot take them when they are necessary, and sometimes when you have an opportunity, even if you take it then, it doesn't make sense anymore. So God told Jacob to go. 
and that was how Jacob left. And we know the rest of the story when he met God and reconciled with God and had that big battle where he has to fight, the fight for his destiny. The Bible says, and Jacob wrestled with the Lord. Genesis 32, 24. He saw a man. The Bible says he was left alone. And there he wrestled with the Lord all night. Oh, Labaga Shikataba. Today, whatever has kept you bound, you are going to fight for your destiny. You will not die in the house of labor. No, 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 no. You will not die in service. You will not die even in Egypt. It is time to go. God told Moses, tell, tell Pharaoh, let my people go that they might serve me. Exodus chapter 9, verse 1. Go tell Pharaoh, let my people go that they might serve me. They have been there for If you look at when God was speaking to Abraham in Genesis 17. He said, your children will sin against me. They will go into a foreign country. They will stay there for 400 years, but I'll bring them out and they shall not come out empty. But they stayed there 470 years. They expired in Egypt. The prophecy was 400 years. What happened? What happened? Another 70 years of delay has have, have come and passed and people have died. Do you know that some of the people that are supposed to come out of Egypt didn't make it out because they died in Egypt? Even before Moses came. Today, your, mercy, your Moses is here. The word of God that is coming to you. It shall illuminate your mind. You are coming out of every dungeon, every captivity, every place of slavery. You might have been paid and you think that the pay is enough. God says it's time to start your own. Time and chance happens to them all. Time and chance. You must take that opportunities that are set before you. Nebo go sakata barika na mashiko tobo. Ne maga shakata balakata raba siko tobo. Ne baga shiko tobo sekete baba baba. Re baga shakata ba. In the name of Jesus Christ. Time and chance. It's what happened to them all. The race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. Neither yet bread to to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill. But what happened? Time and chance happens to them all. You have opportunities that are knocking by you every day. Are you taking that opportunity? Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 11. Spell it out. It is only by chance and opportunity that you break forth. Today is that time. God is saying, get out. Get out from the house of Laban. Get out from the place of bondage and slavery. Get out. God told Moses, go tell my people. Let my people go. Tell Pharaoh. Tell my enemy. Tell them to get out. That they might serve me. A lot of us, the, 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 the devil will commit you with wine. A lot of Christians have bowed to the statue of Babylon. We pursue the resources of America. We can't even think. We are always at work. We work two for seven. There's no time for your children, no time for your husband, no time for yourself, no time for your family, no time for anything. And people work in this circle of standing. They run at a race that is not easy to catch up. And they keep going around and around and they die. And they are buried. And nothing to show for it. And they have been working. Don't let the devil eat your lunch. Take, take it easy and look back. And begin to ask the right questions. You have worked 10 years. What can you show for it? Your children don't even know who you are. You are like a visitor in the house. Your husband or your wife don't know you again. Marriages have been destroyed. In America and all over the world. Because of the quest. To succeed. The devil has presented a statue. Remember when, ba when, when Nebuchadnezzar built his golden statue in Babylon? And he didn't say, if you hear the sound, you bow to me. He said, when you hear the trumpet, you bow to this golden statue. A lot of people are bowing to the golden statue up till today. They don't have a physical golden statue. But what we are seeing is dollars and pounds. Those things have kept people going. They have to bow and sell themselves for nothing just to get their hands on it. Oh, Labaga Shikataba. Joshua said in Joshua 24, verse 15, as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. What, what do you say? 
Joshua 24, verse 15. Ask for me and my house, me and my children. Some people is just ask for me. No, you must include their children because if you are the only one that is standing with God, you are still standing with the devil. I'm telling you, you have to influence your environment. If you are the only one that is successful, you are poor. That's why the madman of Gadara, when Jesus healed him from the demonic oppression in his life, Mark chapter 5, the Bible said, he said, I'm going with you when Jesus was about to leave. Jesus said, go back to your people. Tell them how the Lord has healed you. Tell them what you have received. And the Bible said, by the time Jesus was selling, the guy published it in every, every newspaper, every media outlet, because he was a known madman. A known madman. Let me tell you, madness is a, a spirit of delay. Somebody can be crippled and still become everything in life. Somebody can be blind and succeed in everything. But when people are mad, they begin to have bipolar. They cannot comprehend things. The devil will, the devil will eat your lunch. That's why every mad person that Jesus saw, he healed them. Rabogo Sakata Baba. As for me and my house, Jesus told the man, say, go back to your family. Tell them what the Lord has done for you. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. The guy said, I'm following you. I want to go with you. Jesus said, well, this territory is yours. When he, Jesus left, the guy, the guy brought 10 cities to God. The whole city of Gadaret came to Christ because of that one madman. Remember that legions of demons came out of him. Today, God is delivering you from every spirit of delay by the power and the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. What about the book of Zechariah chapter 1 verse 18? When nobody can lift up their head because there are forces, horns of the enemy that have kept everybody bound. The Bible said, then I lifted up my eyes and saw and behold, four horns. There are horns that are in cities. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, what be this? And he answered and said unto me, these are the horns which scattered Judea and Israel and Jerusalem. And the Lord showed me four carpenters in verse 20. We are reading down to 21. Then said I, what are these come to do? And he said unto me, these are the horns which have scattered Judea so that no man did lift up his head. But these have come to fray them, to cast out the horns of the Gentiles which lifted up their horn over the land of Judah to scatter it. Every horn of the enemy that have delayed you, that have scattered your blessings, that have scattered your life, scattered the things that you do, your marriage, that is scattering what you are doing, your anointing, scattering your ministry. We come against it. Let the angels of God, the carpenters, begin to free them now by the power and the authority. This time, the man of God was in the city and he was also hindered because the demons, the four horns, those principal is kept him bound. No man can lift up their head. He was asking the angel, what be this? He said, these are the horns that have scattered Judea, Israel, and Jerusalem that no man can lift up their head. Every horn that is setting up an embargo over your life, over your ministries, business, job, career, marriage, advancement, let God begin to free them now. Oh Lord, we ask for you to send your ministry angels to scatter the horns of the Gentiles, the horns of demonic forces, the horn that is holding us bound, every horn from the pit of hell. The Lord said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Every gate of hell that is rising up against the wisdom and the knowledge of God, against the power of God today, bring it down. Say, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ and taking into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Today, Lord, scatter every horn of the enemy. Delay is a very terrible thing. God will give us speed today. So if you have been delayed, what you need is speed to begin to overcome. And what God does in giving you speed, it will add years to your life. Psalm 51 verse 5. Psalm 91, I'm sorry, Psalm 91 verse 5, 5 to 9, the Bible says, Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrows that flyeth by day, 
nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall by your side, ten thousand by your right hand, but it shall not come near your dwelling. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, your habitation. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror. There are terrors out there by night. And there are arrows that fly during the day. But you are not afraid of them because the Lord will be with you. Today, let God arise and scatter every destructive spirit. Every power that wastes at noonday. The Bible says, thousands shall fall by us. We have seen this thing. You know, sometimes when we read the Bible, it doesn't make sense. But we have seen people die, even up to the people we know. This pandemic looked like a joke, but people are dying in it. A thousand shall fall by your side, ten thousand by your right hand, but none shall come near your dwelling. Today we ask for divine protection. Every delay of the enemy, we come against it. Every delay, every spirit of death. Sometimes somebody is rising in a family and the devil knows that if that man rises, 10 people also will rise. The devil will cut them short. Every accent that has been stolen, that have been that have fallen into the water in your life, we ask for the accent to begin to float again. Maybe your father was the accent and he was doing very well. At the time you are about to go to college, he lost his job and the accent is no more there. Everybody in the family began to suffer. Today, we come against every spirit that we, where we bring people down for where God has placed them. You shall not be afraid of the terror. Whatever terror it is that the devil brings around you. We bless you, Lord. We worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Luke chapter 18. If you look at verse 1 to 8, there's a story of a woman here. But Jesus started with prayer. The Bible says, men ought always to pray and not faint. What you will use to undo the forces of the Gentiles is prayer. So there's a certain judge which feared neither God nor regard any man. And there was a woman who was a widow in that city. The Bible says she came to this judge to avenge for her adversaries. And he could not for a while. Yes, because she was consistent and persistent. She could not go. The man that could not just have to turn her his mind and came back and the Bible said, yet because this widow troubled me, I will avenge her. Please, by her continuing coming, she worry me. The Bible said, what about God? These things that we do every day, you think we're just here joking or we're beating the wind? I'm telling you that if you put your mind in these prayers consistently and con continuously, you will always succeed. The Bible says, and the Lord said, hear the unjust judge, verse 6, verse 7, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry unto him day and night, though he bear long with them. And Jesus said in verse 8, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. God is going to begin to give you speed now. God will avenge you. Nevertheless, he said, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on earth? Will he find you still being faithful? Are you, are, are you going to be compromising then? Let the power of speed come upon you. The anointing for speed. God will begin to reward you. Hebrews 11 verse 6 said, For without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Once you know that God is a rewarder, He's the one that can give you all the blessings. You are not going to run to, from pillar to pole. A lot of people are confused. It is happening in downtown, the idea. It's happening in Oklahoma. It's happening in California. It's happening in Maryland. They're just confused. But if you stay with God and you are placed of establishment and you continue to pray and fast, the aura of the presence of God in that place creates an altar. After a while, you will have what we call divine encounter. Spirits will come to you because you refuse to back down. The woman was consistent and the judge said, well, I don't fear God or man, but I don't want this woman to worry me. She disturbs me a lot. I'm just going to avenge for her. 
and Jesus said, will not God even also do it for the elect speedily? This is your time. God is avenging you from every spirit of delay. Whatever the devil has kept away from you, the Bible said the Lord is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. As you continue to seek him diligently, consistently, the Lord shall reward you. Libraga Shikotobo Likana Mama. John 17, verse 12. The Bible says, While I was with them in the world, Jesus was giving an account. While I was with them in the world, he said, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou givest me, I have kept. And none of them was lost but the son of perdition that the scriptures might be fulfilled. Jesus told God, say, look, everything you give to me, I kept. But many of you, the devil has delayed you, made you to lose things, marriages. You have lost positions that you are not supposed to lose. Today, we are getting them back by the power and the authority. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew chapter 16, we have talked about it before. Jesus said in verse 19, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom. There are keys that open different doors. Today, you don't need one key. You need many of them. Because there are many other things that you will need. If you need to use the restroom, there's a key to that room. If you need to use the living room, there's a key to it. You need to access the kitchen, there's a key to it. If you want to access your bedroom, you need a key to that place. God is giving you all those keys. The keys to your storehouse. In the name of Jesus, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Receive it now. The key that will open every door for you. If you look at verse 18, he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. And he said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom in verse 19 of heaven. And whatsoever you shall bind, you shall lock. That's another thing. Another word to use where he said bind. Because you have keys. Whatever you shall lock on earth shall be locked in heaven. And what you lose here on earth, the Lord shall lose in heaven. Begin to open doors for yourself. Because you have the right key today by the power and the authority. Today, the devil cannot shortchange you anymore. Every power from the pit of hell that is trying to keep you bound, let the power of God move in you right now. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God is redeeming your time. Remember what we were saying today. How we began. I told you that the unit of destiny is time. It's time. The race is not to the swift or the battle to the strong. But time and chance happens to them all. Time and chance. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 16. The Bible says, redeem the time because the days are evil. Redeem it. How do you redeem something? God is going to give you more time. Redeem the time because the days are evil. Time. God is giving you time to cover what the devil has stolen, what he has delayed you of, what you have not been able to get. Now you are going to redeem the time. God will begin to grant you what speed. That is where the miracle comes. You will get you get some speed right now. Proverbs 14, verse 12. There's a way that seems right unto man. But the Bible said the end thereof are the ways of death. You will not go and waste 20 years and discover that you are in the wrong way. You will get it right from the first time. There's a way that seems right. Let God begin to pray that prayer. Say, Lord, I will not walk on the wrong way. And after 10 years, then you say, Oh, I've made a mistake. Like Jacob went into the house of Laban and spent 20 years. He would have died there. God said, get out and go back to thy father's house. Get out. Because the plan of Laban was to delay him. And they will be telling him all the nice things and keep him there. And he will work for them until he has no strength anymore. They will push him out. There is a way that seems right. Don't just go to any way. Go to the right way. Make sure you are in the right way. Don't walk in a way that looks like it was right. 
There is no time to guess. You don't have time to second guess your destiny anymore. If you have, if you are 10 years of, or 15 years, yes, you have that time. But even at that age, you're supposed to begin to know through your mentor, your father, your mother, your teachers, or people that are putting you in the right path. Because the Bible says the path of the just is like a shining light. It shines brighter and brighter onto a perfect day. You don't want to walk in a wrong way. And after 10 years, 20 years, you discover that you have not made any headway. You And you know you can't just continue going. Once you discover that you have missed your way, what do you do? You go back. And if you look at the time to go back, you spend 10 years going up, you have to spend 10 years coming back. The Lord will give you speed today. Speed to catch up from everywhere that the devil has stolen from you. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. The Bible says for this cause, for this cause, we also since the day we had it, do not cease to pray for you. And to desire that you might be filled with what? With the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. These are three things that you need so that you don't miss your way. That you might be filled with knowledge. There's, that's the dimension of the Holy Ghost. And the will of all wisdom. Not just any wisdom. All of them. You get strict wisdom, sensual wisdom. You know the wisdom from God. You have every wisdom. So that you can be able to discern and move forward. And spiritual understanding. Let me tell you something. Understanding is the most important thing in life. There's a miracle that is in understanding. One day I'm going to talk about the miracle of understanding. Because once you understand things, it becomes easy for you to actualize them. Understanding and wisdom and knowledge comes from the same womb. But they evolve over time. What you are speaking to you once you hear me and you understand it, then you can be able to apply it well. It is through understanding that knowledge is metamorphosed to wisdom. Receive the, 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 spirit, the spiritual understanding today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let these three things happen for you as I pray with you right now. The knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Receive it. The knowledge of his will. Because you don't want to do your will and 20 years after, and you discover that you are doing the wrong thing. Even though you have been standing in church clapping hands, you have been praying and fasting, and you have just entered into the long route. Today, you are coming back to do the will of God. That's why the Bible says when you pray, pray this in this manner. Thy will be done. Hallelujah, in my life. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Once you are in the will of God, then you will operate in everything that God wants you to do. Thank you, Jesus. Acts 26, verse 20, 22, the Bible says, Having therefore obtained help from God, we have obtained help. I continue unto this day. Hallelujah. When you obtain help, it's not time to go and sleep. Having what? Obtained help from God. What happened? Say, I continue, I continue, I continue unto this day. Jesus said to the Jews that believed in him, John chapter 8, verse 30. He preached the word of God, and many Jews believed in him. In verse 31, he said, If you continue in my word, the key is not to begin something. Starting anything, anybody can start something. But are you going to continue? When there is afflictions and persecution, will you continue? Having obtained help from God, say, Oh Lord, help me today. Let God begin to help you. We have a comforter which is called the Holy Ghost. Jesus said in John 16, I'm going to send for you a comforter and he will help you and he will teach you all things. If you have that help from God, the man of God discovered that they, he, he got to this level because there was a help. But he did not say, oh, since God is helping me, let me just go sleep. He said, and I will continue unto this day. Are you continuing in the word of God? Are you continuing in the presence of God? If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed? And you shall know. There's something to know about God. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28 to 31. We are going to pray. The Bible says, Have thou not known, have thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the end of the earth, fainted not, neither is weary. There is no word searching of his understanding. It's boiled down to understanding. The Bible says he giveth power to the faith and to them that have no might. He increases strength. I want you to pray. Lord, give me power. Increase my strength today. 
give me power. He said, he give power to the faint. That means people that are already tired, God will empower them, give them time. And to them that have no might, he increases in strength to 30. We know that the Bible said, even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall all three fall. But 31, they that wait upon the Lord as we have waited, your strength shall be renewed. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. Let God begin to give you an eagle wing. What we are talking about that is capacity development. God will begin to make you to be above and beyond. When you mount up with wings as an eagle, you shall fly above every bed. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. You will begin to run in your destiny, run in your ministry, run in your vision. You shall run the course of your marriage and not be weary. You shall walk and not faint. Receive that ability. This is when you begin to do exceptional things. You do supernatural things naturally and natural things supernaturally because you have been empowered. While you were waiting, God was empowering you, increasing your capacity. Your strength was renewed that when you begin, you don't have to go backward. You just keep going. Receive that strength from above right now by the power and the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 24, verse 45. Luke 24, 45. The Bible says, Then open he their understanding. God begin to open your understanding today that they might understand the scriptures. This is a miracle. Say, Oh Lord, open my understanding. Begin to pray that prayer. Oh Lord, Father, open my understanding that I will begin to understand. I will understand the scriptures. I will understand. Things will begin to be clear for me. I will understand where you want me to go, my vision. I will understand my purpose. I will understand the race that you want me to run. I will understand what city you want me to be in. I will understand. Open my understanding. That means something was locked before. When God opened something, that means it was closed. Oh Lord, open my understanding. Hallelujah. He said, then open he their understanding that they might understand the scripture. Receive that ability right now. Let your understanding be enlightened, be open. Psalm 18, verse 28, the Bible said, For thou will light my candle. The Lord, my God, will enlighten my darkness. Verse 29, For by thee I have run through a troop, and by my God I have leaped over the wall. The first thing God brings is illumination. He brings perspective and light into your life. Once your candle is lit up, you have light now. The Lord will enlighten every dark place in your life. Then you will shout. The Bible says you shall run through a troop. It doesn't matter whether there are millions of troops in front of you. You will run through a troop. And by God, by the might of God, by the ability of God, you shall leap through the wall. Every wall that is blocking you, you are leaping through that wall today by the power and the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 to 3. Arise, shine, for your light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. I'm telling you, there's something about light. When light, I'm not talking about the sunlight, but all of them are light. When the light of God enter into your place, darkness will disappear. The Bible says, Arise, shine, for your light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and cross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. The Bible says, The Gentiles, unbelievers, shall come to thy light, and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. Begin to rise today. Let the, they, they let the light in you begin to attract unbelievers. Let it attract kings and influential people. People that are wealthy, people that have resources. The unbelievers, the Gentiles shall come to thy, to thy rising. Hallelujah. They shall come to thy light and the king shall come to thy rising. If you look at verse 11, the Bible says, therefore thy gate shall be opened. Your bank account, your business shall be opened continually. They shall not be shut day or night. That men shall bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles and they shall, and that their kings may also be brought. Every power around the nations around you, they will begin to come. Verse 12, for the nations and the kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. 
every nation because God has lifted up, up the light upon you. Men shall begin to come to thy rising. The kings of the world shall come. The Bible said, Leko Robo, your gate shall be opened from today. Let every gate in your life in the spirit the gate of your account numbers the gate of your businesses be open you shall become visible again thy gate shall be open continually they shall not be shut day or night everything that you do men will not look for you they will find you you shall be visible when peter was brought out of the prison the bible said after they passed the iron gate and that led into the city the angel let him go because Peter was in the city where he can be visible, where he can be seen, where he can begin to see things. Today, wherever the devil has kept you, get out, arise, and shine now. For your light is come. The Bible says, for the nations and the kingdoms will come and serve thee. Let every nation around you begin to serve you. Oh, rabba, rabba, rabba. Receive the anointing to do great things in the presence of God. Receive that anointing right now. Because of time, Acts chapter 10, 38. The Bible says how God anointed Bishop Cape Ezobele with Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, put your name there, and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. The Lord is with me. The Lord is with you also. The Bible says God anointed Jesus. It was a special anointing. Jesus of Nazareth with Holy Ghost and with power that he went about doing good from today. Let the anointing upon your life begin to spur you to do great things, to do oh, impossible things, to begin to do what is not possible with normal men. You shall, oh Karababa, heal all that were oppressed with the devil because God is with you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the force of God begin to stand with you. But you must have hunger. The only thing that guarantees you to continue to succeed in this kingdom is your hunger, your appetite. To desire the things of God. Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. The Bible says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Receive the feeling of the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive it now by the power and the authority. For Ale Korobo Sakata Bababa. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst for righteousness. They shall be filled. They shall be filled. Oh, you A lot of people have compromised their life because of corn and wine. In fact, the children of Jacob have to leave the place where they were living and go to Egypt just to get corn and wine. And I don't know how many families have left their place of calling and they have ended up in Egypt because of corn and wine. But today, God is going to give you those. Genesis 27, verse 28. Ore bogo sakata bababa, likono mo shakata bababa. Rekanama shikotobo. Rebaga shakata bababa. Magodo robo sikataba. Lekoto robo sikataba bababa. Magida raba shikotobobo. When Isaac blessed his sons, the Bible said, He said to them, God give thee the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Corn and wine was what led the sons of Jacob into Egypt. And they ended up being in slavery for 400 years. God will give you those things that will let men, men out of his presence. A lot of people have left the presence of God because of corn and wine. They used to do well with God, but since they have gotten some kind of job, they don't even pray again, they don't fast anymore. They are always working. God will take that away. The Bible said, the Lord bless me and give you the dews of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Receive it now. Receive it now. In the name of Jesus Christ, the last but not the least prayer. Psalm 112 verse 1 to 3. Praise ye the Lord. Psalm 112 verse 1 to 3. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandment. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generations of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Receive the wealth of this world today. Let them come and stay with you. Let the wealth of this nation, let it be in your house. God told um, the children of Israel through Isaac, he said, the Lord bless you with corn and wine. What people are going outside to look for shall be around you. It shall be at your disposal. 
we have access to greatness. Receive it now, today, by the power and the authority in Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want to pray with you here. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are why we gather and pray here every day. I want you to say after me, Lord Jesus Christ, I confess you as my Lord and Savior, and I believe in my heart that you died and resurrected from my sins. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. God bless you. If you need more of the word of God, connect with us through this ministry. Write to us. If you are in Georgia and Atlanta, we are not shy to invite you to fellowship with us. Go to our YouTube page. Click a like on it, Bishop Gabe Ezobele, or where you are watching us now on Facebook or wherever you are. You are hearing the sound of my voice. The Lord be with you and make his face to shine upon you. I love you all with all my heart, but above all, Jesus loves you the more. Have a wonderful week ahead of you. Amen.